Once the system is in operational use, it'll be used within its external environment to close that capability gap that defined the need for the system in the first place. Support will also be provided to the system. It's common to think of support in some form of hierarchy. In this MOOC, we've used the words operational, maintenance and engineering support to describe this hierarchy. Let's use our house example to explain. When you live in a house, there's always something that needs to be done. We sweep the floors, we clean the bathrooms, we keep the spider's webs away. We might even need to change the odd light bulb or the odd washer in a dripping tap. These are activities that we expect users to be able to look after in order to keep our house running smoothly. And these are examples of operational support activities. In the longer term, we might need to repaint our deck every year to protect it from the weather. And we might need to clean the gutters every autumn. We would consider these routine or preventative tasks to be example of maintenance support. Sometimes we would need to get an expert for things like electrical problems or sewerage blockages. Even though we need external help with these issues, they are still maintenance activities because we're not changing anything about the house, we're simply maintaining it. Sometimes though, we need deeper support. And we've called this category engineering support because the deeper support often involves making changes or upgrades to the system. Engineering support needs to be established with the system. It's not something that we can assume will be in place automatically. Ensuring all of our engineering and design documentation is correct during the detailed design and construction and production phases will be an important part of enabling engineering support into the future. This leads us on to a discussion about modifications. Modifications to our systems during the utilisation phase are almost inevitable. Users will suggest new requirements. Our environment will change. Technology will change, causing us to address obsolescence and enhance supportability. Sometimes modifications are also required to address issues that were uncovered during the testing process. Modifications are like a reinvigoration of the systems engineering process. A modification is like a mini systems engineering process all over again, where we have a complex problem that needs to be understood, solved and implemented. Where possible, we should try to build expandability and upgradability into our systems to support future growth and modifications. Some examples in a house might include a house being designed for a small family with the expectation that children will follow and the house will need to be extended. Another example might be a house being designed to allow the addition of autonomous accommodation for an ageing relative in the future, or anticipating that our carport might one day become a lock-up garage with a workshop and a shower. If we take into account these possibilities during the design and construction phase, we will have much more flexibility in incorporating these upgrades in a cost-effective fashion in the future. Ultimately, all good things come to an end, and disposal or retirement of our system is required. Disposal of our system is normally brought about for one of a few reasons. Maybe we no longer have a need for the system, and therefore we dispose of it. Our house might become too big for us as children leave home, leading us to decide to sell it and move to a smaller place. Sometimes our systems start becoming just too difficult or too expensive to maintain and support, leading to a decision to dispose of it. Again, our house could be an example of this. Maybe our house is a multi-storey house and becomes too difficult to get up and down and up to the upper levels to clean the house. Maybe the house is a heritage listed property that needs to be maintained in a particular way using particular materials and skills that are becoming increasingly difficult to source. Of course, there could be many more reasons why a decision is made to dispose of a system. The disposal options available to us are wide and varied. We have discussed the idea of on-selling our house. Selling a system to a new organisation is certainly one of the disposal options available. Sometimes our systems are disposed of by destruction or scrapping. We've all seen examples of old buildings being knocked down and destroyed. It is possible that some recycling of parts or materials may occur when a system is disposed of in this way. Sometimes we retire a system from one role, disposal as far as that role is concerned, but use it in a different role. For example, in my experience in the aerospace industry, I've seen old aircraft taken out of operational service and reused as training aids. 
I've also been involved with old aircraft being taken out of operational service and being used as museum pieces. In these cases, the end of one life cycle, in this case operational service, marks the beginning of another, in this case training aids or museum pieces. When we're disposing of our system, we need to be wary of classic disposal issues such as the presence of hazardous materials, the presence of sensitive or classified information and environmental constraints and laws when making our disposal decisions. Once a system has been disposed of, the life cycle of that system for that role has concluded.